Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 7. How are you guys doing today? How's life? I know what you're asking. What is the plan for today? That is a very good question. We are going to gaze into my beautiful eyes for the next 20 minutes or so. It's a horrible plan, right? I know. So I did spend a decent amount of time mining and well, I ran into an issue. In this mod pack, we have the artifacts mode, meaning that it will give you random OP items that you can wear in your bubble start. Last episode, I did manage to get the digging claws, which is going to give us haste. I did manage to get the pistons, which will give us knockback. And I did manage to find the shoes, which will increase our speed. It's not as great as the sash from Botania, because yes, it does give you step assist as long as you're running. If you're not running, you're stuck. Oh, I have garbage. And that brings up another question. Lush, what is the problem? You were nagging about your speed last episode and you got the shoes, so you have speed. Where's the problem? I want all of it, not just one. I don't want to just get lucky, I want to have access to everything. And if you're not very familiar with the artifacts mod, yes, you are going to find the artifacts in dungeon loot and also something called a mimic. This is a mimic. It's basically a chest which is trying to eat your face. Ooh, amethyst. I missed it. So here's what I did. I did bring some mob swaps and I did take a sample from a mimic. So I'm not really sure. We have the mob grinding utilities. We do have apotheosis. So maybe I can make a spawner out of it. But let me do some more mining. That was a block of raw iron. Ah, okay, let me do some more mining and I'll meet you back at the base. So I fell into a hole uh, and there's another mimic. Hello. Invisibility. And not the best. You might not be able to see my beautiful eyes. <laughs> Jerk. You know, it's very stupid that the Lord of Darkness should look for a chicken every single time. Happy birthday, Taco! But the spawn egg is not an egg. <laughs> That's funny. We have the spawn egg. We also need a spawner. Um, this is a roguelike dungeon which I have already explored. And maybe I have left the spawner intact. But I haven't gone that way. And nothing, but it is the first floor. It's kind of garbage. I have found a spawner. Perfect. Um, I did bring a silk touch pick. Let us see if we can pick it up. Come with me. Oh, I got it. Nice. Go to hell. So this is just the hole under our base and I was thinking maybe we try it over here. Uh, well, we can contain it at least. So here is the spawner. You're going to get a comparator so that we can turn you on and off. And I really hate the pistol on my hand. Oh yeah, we can turn it off. Good. All the modium is going to ignore spawn conditions. That is good. And this should speed it up a bit. Oh, I forgot the egg. And it does work. Do you spawn something? Please. Ah, uh, I'm happy, I guess. I got the claws again. And I got the flippers, which is something that I already have. Is there a way to increase the entities? Yes. Gas tier. Don't you worry. We don't have to go to the nether at all. We can just craft it. Uh, six, nine. Yeah, but let us not be greedy. Let's add like, I don't know, two of them. Maybe. Ooh, flame pendant. This is getting interesting. So let me grind for a bit and I'll be right back. I'm not gonna lie to you, that went far better than I hoped. I think we got everything. So we have three copper chests full of artifacts. And this one has like two rows. At first I was going to say that I have no idea how many I killed, but I'm guessing since the ratio is one on one, well we can count. But who cares? The question is, what are we going to wear? Extra looting? Extra hearts? <laughs> sure. Increases the wearer's flotulence. I'm gonna fart? Do Oh yeah, <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna wear that, but that was funny. Has a chance to strike attackers by lightning. Ooh, plus four attack damage. Sure, increases the experience dropped. Okay, an extra level of fortune. Oh, but we kind of have to pick and choose because I only have one necklace. Uh, I look stupid. Uh, we should definitely turn some of them off. Just before I forget, because I'm sure somebody is going to correct me, it was not the gas tears that I used in order to increase the number of spawns with the spawner, it was actually fermented spider eyes. I kind of noticed it halfway through, so I could not include it in the video. Sorry. Anyways, having speed, extra damage, extra loot, extra fortune is nice, but still we need resources. So let us get back to automation, and I think we should start with create. I think the first thing that we have to start automating is the precision mechanism, because, well, it does not have that many uses, but one of the best features of create is the mechanical arm. And I want to use it, so why the hell not? 
Also, the other one is going to be the electric motor because for some reason having a creative motor is kind of suspicious. And I'm not a very suspicious person. I'm just a person with beautiful eyes. So obviously we first need to have a flat area and I was thinking we do it over here. So yes, this should be a decent space. I also have a feeling that I have to set all the patterns for create, which I haven't done. Okay, so let us figure out what it is that we have to do. Well, first off, we have to give it a gold plate and there are three steps. Cogwheel, large cogwheel and the iron nugget. We have to repeat this process five times and there's an 80% chance of getting a precision mechanism and 20% chance of essentially getting garbage. So based on the recipe, there are three outputs. One is the precision mechanism, one is the precision mechanism working in progress and one is the garbage. Obviously, everything is going to start with a belt. Then we need to have the three deployers. And yes, of course, they are facing the incorrect way. We also need to provide them with three different ingredients. So we are going to have a shoot. Because if you put a chest on top of the deployer, it's actually not working. I did try this once. Clear on top, we're going to have a drawer. Another very important thing is that we're not going to have a buffer of 1000 cogs just to craft something. So I did make a downgrade storage upgrade which sounds weird, and that should reduce it to one stack. And the distance is fine. There's a one block gap. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. We're going to drop the gold plate, it's going to be processed, then we're going to take it back here, filter the garbage out, and put the work in progress back on this belt. I think that is something that can be easily achieved with a few brass tunnels. We don't need that many, but you know, they look cool. Because you know, everything goes inside the tunnel and we can filter the items that we want to extract. I just realized powering everything in the correct order is going to be painful. But essentially that's it. We just have to set up the filters and we're done. But here is the point. I also want to be able to automate everything using refined storage. So we are going to have a few export bosses on the drawers. And if we give it a crafting upgrade, just the one, you should be able to craft the cog wheel, the large cog wheel, and obviously, the iron nugget. Of course, we want our refined storage system to be able to craft everything. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have a pattern that if we give it 10 gold plates, it's going to give us seven precision mechanisms. The success rate is 80%, but I don't really trust it. That pattern goes inside a crafter. The crafter sends the items inside a barrel and we have a funnel which puts everything on the conveyor belt. We also need to set some filters for the brass funnel. And I think what we have to do is that, well, I did manage to make two precision mechanism when the system was up there, just for testing purposes. We're going to have a whitelist for precision mechanism that goes on this tunnel. Actually, you know what? Someone is going to tell me you can just do this. So I'll just do this. And then I need to know what kind of garbage am I going to get? Aha. <laughs> so we kind of have to run it for a while. So let me hook up everything to rotational power and I'll be right back. You know, once you get the hang of this mod, it's actually not that bad. It wasn't that difficult and everything seems to be rotating in the direction that it should. Although I would like to mention that it does look horrendous. So I have also hooked up the crafter to our refined storage system and let us give it a test. It's not actually a test. We just want to see what kind of garbage it's going to give us. The plates are coming. That is good. But this is fun. <laughs> But obviously everything comes here and that is not something that we want. We need to blacklist it over here. And as it turns out, there are only four stages, so we can just blacklist all of them. There you go. Now it's a functioning system. Of course, the problem is that I have not received any garbage. Where's the garbage? Well, it doesn't really matter to me. We can either whitelist the garbage to go back into our system or we can blacklist the products. So who cares? We are going to have two dimensional chests with funnels. It goes in, right? Yes, yes. And I think that was one of the garbage. The dimensional chest is also hooked up to our refined storage system. So if I check the crafting monitor, yeah, it's not being crafted. Good. The crafting job is finished. Okay, so we are basically done with the precision mechanism. Everything is automated. All I have to do is that I need to hide all the garbage. But there are two more things that we need to automate. Actually, three more items. One is the metal press so that we can make plates. The other one is the rolling mill so that I can make copper coils so that I can make electric motors. And of course, the final thing is the electric motor itself. So for the mechanical press, as well as the rolling mill, we're going to use the same system that we use for the precision mechanism, meaning that we're going to have a crafter with the recipe. It exports the items into a barrel. Then we have a funnel. We put it on the conveyor belt. It gets pressed and goes to an ender chest or I should say a dimensional chest. The rolling mill was a little bit different, meaning that it has to go on the conveyor belt itself. So I do have two funnels for it. But essentially, if we want to order some copper wire, maybe 128 of it, this is what should happen. Yep, it does work. I already test the press, so we had the plates. But if we want to order the plates, that should also work. Yes, 
these guys have a massive stress capacity. <laughs> I like them. So now we come to the final part, the electric motor. So for the big crafters, there are so many ways of automating it, but since I'm kind of lazy to pay attention to details, uh, I'm gonna YOLO. Meaning that I'm going to have a bunch of export buses in the back for every single crafter, obviously. And then I need to specify which item goes where. So the iron rod goes in the center. And since I already have a recipe for it with a crafting card, the capacitor goes in the bottom with a crafting card. There are three copper coils, six brass sheets. Yeah, I do understand nothing is going in. It's because it's not hooked up yet. Now it is connected. Do we get everything? Yes. Perfection. Unfortunately, I'm also out of electric motors, so we have to craft this one manually. Can I do it with hand? Nope. Can I steal you for a second? Well, it is what it is. We use a water wheel. Yes, finally. So it is going to craft us an electric motor. It's going to fill in the ingredients and it's going to craft one more. Oh, wait a minute. Is the recipe wrong? I think the recipe is wrong. Ah, yes. You're not brass. You're a copper coil. And if I'm not wrong, this should be the correct one. I should probably sleep for the villagers, not for me. And yes, it's ready. So now it is the time to cheat a little bit. We are going to use that electric motor with a tesseract, but instead of powering this guy, we're gonna add one more. So now that we have added an additional crafter, which is not part of the recipe, the recipe itself is not going to work unless we give it a redstone signal. A, do I have a button? So if I do this, it should craft it. And we are going to use a detector from refined storage in order to give it a redstone signal. Um, I can put you there, right? And then if we specify a filter for the detector for electric motors and set the number to five so that we will always have five electric motors in our refined storage system, we also have to change the mode to emit a signal when above the normal amount. No, below. Yes. So it will craft electric motors until we have five of them in the system and then it will stop. We ran out of something. You don't know how to make it? Oh, my bad. Yes, that's how you make it. We also had the same problem with zinc nuggets. Oh, but I ran into a problem. So the redstone is on, but I have to give you a pulse. Which should have a relatively easy fix. I lowered the detector by one block and I just changed the mode. So whenever it's above the amount, we're going to have a redstone signal. And what we're going to do is that we're going to have a timer, which is going to be set for, I don't know, 100 ticks. And it will pause whenever there is an active redstone signal. So you should craft me five and then stop. Actually, you're not gonna stop. You need a depot. Okay, so I was missing a few recipes and some of the items were not being filled and therefore it got really ugly because it could not craft the item that I wanted. But now that I have all the recipes and we have all the ingredients, it does work. The detector is now online because we have more than five electric motors. Yes, we have seven, but if I remove like three of them, it should function. Well, I also increased the time on the timers, so it's now every 25 seconds, so that the system would have enough time in order to craft all the ingredients. But you see, it's working. It will put it in a depot, and I have an import bus. And since we have five electric motors in the system, it stopped. But now basically anything that I want from Create is automated except the brass itself. But I don't really want to do that today. I'm tired from Create. I still have to clean up this place because it looks terrible and I really need to work on it. But then I remembered, yeah, we do have a colony down there and we should not neglect it. I have stopped working on the town hall. I did not give the builder the ingredients to make the town hall because once we finish it, there are going to be bandits. And I also noticed that there are Amazons, so... That could be a pain. Well, essentially what I'm trying to say is that traveling between my base and the colony is not super easy because of the mountain. And we want a fast method of transportation, which is not using teleportation because I can just put a waste on and call it a day. I noticed this waterfall and well, this could be fun. I mean, we can use a boat to go down safely, hopefully. I'm stuck and the boat is gone, <laughs> but you do get the gist. We can have a waterfall that I can use to go down then we need a method of going up. Let's fix the waterfall. Well, it does look a bit unnatural, but trust me, it's actually fun. Maybe I should make it more steep and a bit more natural. And I don't know what's causing that, but uh, we also have to fix that. Okay, so it has been a very long time and you can literally see that from my ring. Uh, this attuned diamond ring was almost empty and now it's almost full. And what have I been doing except making a stupid path? Well, I made a waterfall and a river. Well, the river, not the waterfall. Uh, it's incomplete. That is where our waterfall is going to go eventually and I did dig this by hand and then I used TNT to make it more natural. 
Natural is not the word, random. And then I thought a boat is actually a very stupid idea because we're basically just falling down and then riding the boat to the village. So instead I decided to go with weighted ejectors from Create. Uh, we stand on this one, we land on the hay bale, we take one heart of damage, and if we go on this one, we land in the water. And there's soul sand, and we're at the village. Perfect. It's actually much faster if I shut up and don't talk. So uh, let's do it one more time without any comments. Ah, huh? it's nice. I thought I'm going to use the same system in order to get back up, but the problem is that the mountain itself is very steep, so you cannot use the launcher. And since I'm out of ideas, we're going to use Ascension from Mahutsukai. I would like to mention that this is a temporary solution, and if you have a better solution, let me know, we will do that next episode. I also got a lot more comments and requests in the previous video. Uh, the problem is that the waterfall took so much time that I can't address it in this one, so we will do it all together in the next one. I'm looking for coordinates, 285. Oh, that's gonna be a long journey. So there is a very small spell from Mahutsukai which is called Ascension and it's going to teleport you to the highest Y level in the world, provided that there is a solid block under it. We are extremely poor, but I'm going to mark it with a netherite block. Although, if we are ascending, it should be one block higher. So we need to stab ourselves, draw Mahu, and it's one gold and two ender pearls. So if I stand on it, I'm up here. It's kind of fun because it will also transport materials. So if I drop cobblestone, all of them should go up. Can we check? Yes. Okay, now that we have means of traveling to the village really fast and get back up to the base, uh, let us finish the town hall. This is fun. Really fun. A bit of a disclaimer, it was not worth the effort because it's not even done. I have to decorate it. Skip the chit chat and get the garbage that you asked. Just wanted to mention that you have everything. I'm guessing she's just stupid. Okay, no, she's not that stupid. She's just incredibly slow. Who the hell are you? Uh, oh, you're from supplementaries. You look angry. I've never seen one before. So it's good that I can go back and forth really fast, but I also want to have a connection for our refined storage system down there. So what we're going to do is that I think we need a transmitter. And then if we go back down there, we need a receiver, which I think I'm going to set it up. I don't know. Here, we need to right click you. You have a coordinates. That is good. And you go back inside the transmitter. 140 blocks. I also have a feeling that I can have a wireless transmitter, maybe, with a few range add-ons and I should be able to access my grid. Yes. But just in case, we are also going to have a crafting grid. Oh, I have made the same boo-boo again. So I can just remove this layer and then we're fine. Yay, she has finished it. We finally have a town. We have so many more things to do. I also have to make a university because for some reason, burying people in a grave requires education. I didn't know that. And I have also noticed that we have a claymore in this mod pack. Uh, since they are going to be raiders, will this work? Isn't it supposed to explode when you're approaching it like so? Oh, awesome, I can't remove it. Or like that. Maybe it doesn't kill me, it kills other people? Yep, thank you for the experiment. Unfortunately, I will not have enough time in order to finish the decorations for the waterfall, the base, and also the create part, but there is one more thing that I want to do before finishing up today's episode. I kind of want to use Mahu Tsukai in order to automate a few stuff, so for that, we need to generate some Mahu. It's a basic version of generating some mana, but I think we are going to go with durability exchange. So the way that the durability exchange works is that you have to have some tools inside a barrel or a chest. And of course I need to stab myself, draw Mahu, which is wrong. Maybe I should do that over here. Yep, so it's one diamond and two emeralds. Essentially, if I put a tool inside, it's going to lose some durability and it's going to generate me Mahu. It's actually not that much, but it's better than the natural regeneration. So I can either do this with something which has a very high durability and is never going to break or something incredibly cheap and well garbage durability. Therefore, I'm actually going to do that with a stone pickaxe because it's incredibly cheap. You see, it's consuming durability and I'm gaining Mahu. And it's basically just stone and sticks. I don't really care. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.